Have you ever wondered how to get shots like this? Or a shot like this? Or even my personal favorite, a shot like this? Today, we're gonna show you exactly how. All right, so we have a lot going on here, but before we get to all that, we're gonna talk about Vlad over here. So Vlad, please give the audience a warm introduction as to who you are. My name is Vlad and I'm founder of uh, Marsmoko. It's a motion control company specializing in motion control for film and television. Were you always interested in you know, this world of filmmaking or did you have interest in other departments like directing or being a DP or anything like Honestly, that? Honestly, it was a re really long path for me. Uh, I started sort of from the camera department. I was uh, camera operating for quite a bit and then I was second AC and first AC on a lot of projects and then I kind of went into the post-production world and did a lot of uh, unscripted, unscripted shows. Assistant editor and then I became post-supervisor so I was supervising shows as well. I was doing a lot of color on the side as well on freelance basis in DaVinci Resolve so I kind of like tapped into pretty much uh, all uh, film aspects. This is a more of a you specific question but like did you have any role models? or anybody that you look to for inspiration? Like, I'm very interested in the tabletop world, and uh, I'm, since I'm doing motion control, it's a big part of my life. I really like the guys from The Marmalade and what they've done. Like, they were the first to implement robotics into the film world, mm -hmm. and I guess, like, what they pulled off, like, it's just insane, yeah. Obviously, Steve Gerald, like, Steve, he's a really big name as well in the industry. Absolutely. And he, he's a nice guy, and, like, what he's doing with the rigs and robotics is, very exciting as well. Why did you feel like you needed to make your own robotic arm versus maybe renting or partnering with another agency? I was looking into uh, buying a complete solution from uh, companies such as like Microbians and Motion Control and other ones as well, but the price is just insane for those rigs. So I started looking into alternatives and that's how uh, I got into this, yeah. Trying to make your own sort of robot arm, I'm sure it's not exactly a walk in the park. Was it challenging learning about the technology and that aspect? Like was it like learning about Honestly, all this yeah. going on? <laughs> <laughs> the most challenging part was finding the information. You can find a lot about robotics in general, but not really like tailored film solution. So I was reaching out to other motion control guys and I was speaking with them, trying to find solutions for mind problems and then some folks reaching out to me as well and they're asking me about their issues and if I have a solution as well. So I guess it's more of a community thing. Question for you, how precise is this uh, robotic arm? So according to the specifications it's uh, 0 0.04 millimeter which essentially is half of the width of a human hair. So yeah it's a very precise machine. Half of the width of a human hair. Okay, <laughs> pretty precise. <laughs> really quickly, like if you could give me or give us a really brief introduction as to how this whole thing sort of works. Right, so essentially in this arm there are six motors. It's a six axis uh, robotic arm. So you can pan, you can do tilt, and then you can rotate the barrel. And then the bigger motors here on the side, you can go up and down, and then you can go back and you can go forward as well. And then you, and have you can the... rotate them all at the same time if that's necessary. So we found out what it does, you know, and we got a good bit of insight as to that. How would you uh, connect a camera to the arm? I don't always need to connect the camera to the arm, but for some special cases, yes, we can connect uh, cameras. For example, uh, pulse synchronization. Uh, for some multi-compositing shots, when you need to do one pass over and over again, multiple times, the arm will repeat it perfectly. But if you're recording at different times, you're pressing the record button at uh, different times, you will have like half frame off image, you know, like a little bit of ghosting because the camera uh, starts reading from the sensor not at the same time. Mm. So that's uh, one of the issues. In that case, you need to pulse synchronize the arm and the camera. So your shutter fires always at the same time. So we can do those things for, for select cameras. Like you need to make like a small circuit for each individual cameras. They have like different voltages in their GPIO outputs and all other stuff. So it's a little bit of DIYing for sure. 
the more you know, right? I did not know that coming into here, but that's really cool insight. Now, how would you connect a camera to this sort of head? Is it dovetail only? We mainly use dovetail plate, yes. Uh, we also can use an L plate if you want to flip camera 90 degrees or just offset it from, uh, this, is, this position of the arm is called under slug mm -hmm. because the camera is under the arm. Yeah. You can uh, have it like here at the top as well. Uh, so the mount just flipped th this way. Uh, you can have an L plate and offset it on the side so the camera is horizontal on the side or vertical on the side, like depending on how you need it. And then you can also rig uh, a roll rig on it. Uh, right now we have a roll rig for uh, Alexa Mini and it could be DIY for other cameras such as uh, red DSMC2 bodies. Okay, sweet. So uh, the roll is just, I guess, infinitely roll. Yes, yeah. it will just rotate the camera around the nodal point, mm. like around like where the uh, around your sensor, essentially. Okay, that's really cool, actually. That's, that's sick. What are some of the advantages of using this robotic arm versus maybe some of the other ones? One of the main benefits is you can power this arm from uh, your typical uh, household 15 or 20 amp circuit. Mm, okay. So you don't need, like anything bigger than this arm will require three-phase power. Oh wow. Like that's the limit. Also, it can fit through the doorway, so it's pretty compact. Uh, the speed, like it's a high-speed arm, uh, linearly it moves uh, two meters a second, and overall speed is 5.6 meaning like all motors combined speed. Also, as we discussed, like it's very repeatable arm and you can do one move over and over again, like you can multi-compose shots. And then when you do foot stunts or like any tabletop work, like you need very precise movements mm -hmm. as well. And a lot of them, like they're not very repeatable. And like when you need to do some foot stunts, you want to eliminate as much uh, room for error as possible. Mm -hmm. That's where this arm really shines, like it eliminates at least one headache out of the whole equation. So we've learned a lot about this robot and you guys don't only do, you know, just one thing like when it comes to robotics, right? You guys also have other systems that you do like pneumatics and that sort of stuff. What is it like synchronizing the robot with those other uh, peripheral devices? I have quite a few tools for that. And uh, one of them, like I use this box, and, like this is the one, the first I built, like I'm looking to modify it as well. Right now we are supporting up to four GPIO triggers. So those uh, will fire up, you know, like your pneumatics, like uh, everything single action. So it's just a pulse of electricity. And then you have like motor controls. So I have two uh, external stepper or servo motors. Uh, support, and I have a support of uh, three Nucleus M motors, uh, which is Focus Area Zoom. Mm -hmm. And then I can expand my system up to uh, eight stepper or servo motors, and then I have can have like up to 10 GPIO triggers. Oh, wow. So you could have a lot of things going on at one oh, yeah. time. Final question. Um, this arm, of course, has been uniquely like rigged to hold cameras, but is it able to do other forms of uh, engineering or tasks? Of course, yeah. The way robotic industry and film works, uh, nobody really, as far as I know, builds their own arms from scratch, like meaning like the arm itself. Mm -hmm. All those arms were originally built for more, more of a, like automobile applications. For more like industrial. Welding, more industrial, yeah. Okay. So you can do some art as well. Like you can, uh, theoretically, uh, you can use it as a giant 3D printer. Uh, like, I guess you can uh, slide the pen onto it, like rig a pen, and you can draw some art on, with it as well. I know bigger arms, like bigger brothers of this little arm. At least I know like uh, in the United States, they were building a shell for the rocket, okay. like to go into the space. And, and they were they, 3D printing. And they were 3D printing like some parts that uh, need to be like very lightweight mm -hmm. and very high heat resistant as well. All right, well, Vlad, thank you again for this in-depth tour on the lovely Mars. My pleasure. Um, again, this robot is sick. You're sick. Everything's sick. I, I love it here. Uh, do us a favor and let the viewers know where they can follow you on socials. Yeah, so our website is uh, marsmoko.com and Instagram is mars.moko. Sweet. All right, well, we're going to get out of the studio. You, I'm sure you got, you got to get home. We're going to see you guys back in the studio.
Well, there you have it. We showed you guys robotics in commercial cinematography. We talked a little bit about the masterminds behind the operation, and we talked a little bit about the journey. If you guys liked this episode, we have a lot more field trips planned. So like, subscribe, and comment to catch us on the next one.